Hi, so nice to hear you. <laughs> on mute. I was gonna say, Rob, it's a good thing you didn't start trying to make out like you were on the camera. <laughs> hey, that could be part of the show, you know, divine masculine, divine feminine. You know, it's like oh my gosh, it. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I know we're early, but I saw that you're on. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to take this opportunity to say hi. And, you know, yes, you're so beautiful. Your hair looks <laughs> wonderful. Well, thank you. I curled it and I usually don't. So it's like, it feels like very poofy. Oh, so. oh um, really? But yeah, which is kind of fun. It feels kind of 80s. You know, everything is going retro anyway. Yeah. So. You look luxuriously uh, divine and feminine. How about well, that? You know, that, that's, we're embracing our divinity, right? I think more people need to do that. Um, yeah. And I, I think that's what you are going to be helping people do with your retreat. You're going to help people embrace their divinity. I think so anyway. <laughs> Most definitely. I was just thinking about that because um, it's, it's been a journey of little things clicking. Right. Little things yeah. clicking yeah. on the inside. Yeah. And, is, uh, is Victoria joining us or... She is. Okay. She is. It's, it's early, so it gives us a yeah. chance. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just super early. I was just sitting here. I, I like it. Kind of writing some notes too, because I noticed like, uh, oh yeah, see, you say like a lot, or I just wanted to have my thoughts organized, so I was like writing out some stuff. I know I made it. You know, I figure we're just gonna let spirit work through us. Yeah. You know? And it's like, you know, it's it's so funny. I um, I found you. A few months ago, I saw one of your postings. You were doing a, um, you just went to a medical conference and you were talking with another woman. And I was so, you resonated so strongly with me. What wow. you were saying and, you know, and just the way you're saying it and just your passion about it. And, you know, I looked you up and, you know, the way I think you were in Germany at the time or you had just been in Germany. Um, so I, I don't know how old, the, I mean, I think the video was pretty you know, recent when I saw it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I just thought, you know, it doesn't matter if, you know, like millions of people watch a video, all it takes is one. And yes. I was so, I was so affected by what I saw. I knew I had to reach out to you. you know? Thank you very much. And wow. that's why I wanted to friend you. And I'm like, I like this woman, you know, it's like, you know, she's science and spirituality. She's got, you know, she's got the yin and the yang going for her. She's balanced. And. I felt this is what the world needs. The world is so askew right now. It's like, we need more balance. And just by listening to you and you, were, you guys were having fun, you were talking, but you know, it's just, you, you were so connected and you were so it's grounded. All, yeah. And it's it, all it, accidental. Yes. <laughs> it, was like, it, was like, it was like spirit was working through you, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, well, wow. and I, I thought, well, how many other people did you touch? You know, that, you know, it's like, you know, I reached out because I knew I had the show and, you know, and I'm like trying to figure out, you know, how do I, you know, how do I find my truth in all this, you know? And, um, and then when I saw your retreat that you have coming up in May, you know, um, that's my birthday week, you know, so oh, I, yes. I, I did, otherwise, but, oh, it's so cool. Um, but I, I knew I had to, so I knew I had to reach out to you. So thank you so much for doing this. Wow. No, thank you. I'm excited <laughs> to get interviewed by someone because it's, it's so funny because last year that that kind of was the thing. We can go to the office. Right. You know, we're always inviting people to the office, talking to them about their business and what they do and hooking them up with people. That's kind of um, that was my self-appointed title to be a conduit. Yes. Yes. And to connect people. And I was like, wow, well, how am I going to do it? And I just started doing it with Zoom. And I started the Mo Zone. I like and then I just started hearing about certain problems. Like I was on the internet so much. And I was like, wow, people are really mad at men. And men are really mad at women. And so yeah. we really had to do a lot about men and women. You know, and that made me think of one thing you're going to be doing at retreat is womb healing. And yeah, I, and I was thinking about that because it's not just women who have to do womb healing. Right, that's why we call it sacral healing right. because right. it's right because men, so many men are so angry at their mothers, you know, or so angry about, and they don't know why they just are. And I, I think it, I think it's a lot of ancestral trauma that's never been healed, and it's just like goes down the generation. And so, just the whole concept of healing that shackle 
you know, sacred area, you know, the, right. the, you know a lower chakra, um, the root chakra. And I thought, how beautiful is that? You know, and, and you got, and you're doing it. Yeah. You're it out there. Well, part of what um, Victoria is going to do is actually taking you back to your birth and healing any trauma from that. And I felt, I believe that goes back two or three generations. So any any trauma that your mother had or your grandmother had during their birth is passed down to you too. Right. So it's exciting and amazing. Like my gift really is more words and right. Victoria's healing. Now you were in the army, right? The US yes. Army. So you're a veteran now, right? Yes, I'm okay. a veteran. All right. Woohoo. All right. Well, thank you for your service. Um, thank you. But, so, you, and you were a clinical scientist? Yeah, medical lab technician. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's very right brain. You know, I mean, that's very methodical. That's very, you know, you've been very, you know, focused and, you know, in a lot of ways, very linear. And, you know, the, what you're doing at the retreat is very non linear. So, how was it they came to start combining the two? It's, it's always been something, you know, it's so weird because I would be at work and um, huh. <laughs> I could see everybody was basically like dying at work. We're literally dying. And I really got to this point where I said, you know what, we're working every day to pay to live somewhere where we barely spend time. Right. We have children, our children are being raised by the school and daycare, you know, cause my son has to go to daycare before school and after school. And then you get this little bit of time with them and now you're supposed to try to teach them something or raise them and they're basically not being raised by you. Right. And me personally, I was on an extreme physical decline, even with my memory and stuff like that. So I knew I knew I needed to stop working, but I would go around and I could see, oh, I would stop people and be like, do you have a headache? Are you all right? And they'd be like, how'd you know? Because I'm looking at their facial cues and things and. I'm like, you know, seeing people who are limping or their back is hurting and you, you can just see all the pain. Right. And I was like, wow, we're literally dying in here. We got to get out of here. <laughs> and um, I just, I could just see everybody was suffering. I didn't exactly know what to do about it. Yeah. But, you know, you come closer and closer to your own healing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, going to the chiropractor, going to acupuncture, Mm -hmm. realizing that my body was starving and my brain was starving mm -hmm. i'm not building new you know new brain cells right. and my neurotransmitters are dying and i was starting to see myself really crash and yeah. so i was on my own journey to mm -hmm. heal myself but the thing is you and chose to do something about what? it though. What, i'm sorry what was it that made you cho choose to do something about it because a lot of people don't do anything about it until it's like you know last minute you know, too late type thing. But it sounds like you really decided to change that path. I was pushed. Um, I ended up medically retiring. I had to leave. I literally had to leave because if I see myself pouring, working with blood mm -hmm. materials, if making a mistake, that's, you know, detrimental to someone's life. Right. And I would catch myself starting to make mistakes. And I was like, I can't be here anymore. This, okay. this is dangerous <laughs> you know and um when i and then physically too you know with the army with my back my neck my legs all these physical problems i was just i was pretty much forced to to look at it because and, and it did cause depression and i was you know i'd be sobbing sometimes because you think like oh I'm, I'm only 40 years old and like you can just visualize your life with a wheelchair but when I medically retired, I still just didn't want to lay down and just, you know, take pills. I wanted to, I wanted to still be a viable person. Right. But so, just, too, because I had a son. So it's like, no, I can't afford to lay down and just die. I have to go do something. And then my little busy brain. I always thought too, before, like you have your real job mm -hmm. so that you can go do your dream job. And I always wanted to write. And I ended up in these book projects. So I kind of got swept on into some book projects and, you have several books out. Yeah. Several. Collaborations. Most right. of them are collaborations, but it allowed me to work with so many women. One book, we had 150 women working together. Wow. 
but that's life. Life is collaboration. So that's right. beautiful. What was that book? With um, it is called <laughs> The Daily Dose of Declarations. Woohoo! I like that. Yeah. All right, so daily dose. Words, daily yeah. affirmations. Right. The power of words. Right. I'm going to make sure that I have those because I sometimes I still have a hard time remembering. <laughs> <Like> the <title. laughs> Gosh. Right. Well, the best one was The, the Beauty in My Mess. Which oh, I like that one too. That one was about the first time you've been in love. <laughs> and so then I got to discuss being in love with my son because I was like, that's the first person I ever truly loved because right. you, can't, you can't divorce your kids, you know? Um, like you can get mad at, at someone else and leave them or, you know, that, that, that's when I really learned like true forgiveness. Like I can't be mad at you, you know? Yeah, so, mama hood. Mama hood, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the great part. Wow. So you, you did a retreat last month, right? Did, um, did that, happen? That, retreat, that retreat also got pushed back. Oh, because of this? I think, well, the, what happened was I was trying to help coordinate and I was going to participate in it and I was more helping to coordinate because right. that my gift is the words and I can, I know how to make a theme. I know how to make a party now. I know how to make right. it exciting. But um, I think when she wanted it too soon, she didn't give it enough time. I right. kind of have an idea for it in February and then in March, you can't really do that. Not with, not with a retreat, you need more time. Well, and then I think a lot of people are still kind of uncertain about what's going on. Travel. This is kind of what's going on too, because right. Randy is one of our instructors and she's in Canada. Yeah. So now she found out they're extending the lockdown 30 days. And when you come back, you got to take a COVID test. So it's kind of like, we're, we shall see what happens. Yeah. Well, you had mentioned possibly doing it all online. So is that right. a consi- an option? And also consideration. And then still mm-hmm. a portion of what she was doing was more teaching. It wasn't necessarily hands-on. And, you know, now if you want to do a meditation stuff, you can do that. Um, you can do that online. So she was going to join us online, possibly. Oh, that'd be awesome. So we're still figuring that part out. Yeah. Well, I mean, the main thing is, as long as you keep that energy going, you know, stay in that right. flow, you know, because it is all about energy. You know, I, I know the in-person retreat is all the more special because you're like 24 seven, you know, right. but, um, but you because know. that was the opportunity for people to bond with new right. people and like-minded people right. and do some getting to know you exercises, like sitting in silence. I really yeah. like that exercise. Right. Yeah, and, 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 having, and, and allowing yourself to be vulnerable with somebody right. else. Yeah. And I, I think it's so interesting because it seems like these last few months, it's like we're all feeling very vulnerable, you know, whether it's like, you know, you're you know, you're shut down. I mean, people have lost their jobs. Um, you know, businesses have shifted completely. You know, now it's like, do you take the vaccine? Do you not take the vaccine? Do you get tested? Do you not get tested? You know, how do you protect your child? You know, it's like, there's this huge uncertainty that is making people feel uncertain. And it, I was thinking about that this morning before I knew I was going to talk to you. And I, you know, yesterday was Good Friday. You know, Christ, I don't, I don't know if you are you know, Christian or you read the Bible or not. I, I'm open to all religions. You know, I, I was born and raised Catholic, but I was really thinking, you know, he gave his life for us. And just right. the idea that he was, you know, brutalized and then nailed to the cross. It kind of feels like we're all going through this dark night of the soul. You know, it's like everything that we've, this whole country, this whole planet is experiencing. And it's like, we all have to say, okay, who am I? You know, we're all being given that chance, you know, especially with this lockdown to really figure out who am I, you know, how, how am I being love? How am I being of service? How am I contributing to the love energy of this planet when everything seems to be going against, you know, um, the hurting, you know, the hurt energy, the pain energy, the fear energy, you know, and I think what you're doing, which I love is you are contributing to the love energy which is the healing energy, which is the, I get to know who I am energy, which is so exciting to me because we need so much more of that. 
I like it. Because I mean, last year it was like a huge spot. It was just a huge spotlight. And then mm -hmm. it's just, you know, with so much turmoil, it just is getting darker and darker and darker. And it's like really shining the light in a dark place. Right. Because I was saying to my friends too, if you're not firm in what you believe, mm -hmm. it's really a hard time. Right. Because okay. everybody's coming out with answers, but people, you know, if you don't, if you're, you're not rooted in your beliefs, yeah. you could be following the wrong people. Right. There's so many people just talking, but not necessarily, you know, the right people, not necessarily the right thing. It's really, you know, being rooted in your beliefs mm -hmm. and yeah. definitely giving out the positive. Cause I started <laughs> just taking videos of me feeding a horse and people were so excited. When are you going back to feed the horse? And it was like, <laughs> I'm like, wow, I didn't, okay, let me get up and go feed the horse because these people need it. Like <laughs> people love horses. <laughs> yeah, they do. But then they want to see some good news besides right. all what's going on. People want some good news. Well, I, I think the good news is you're, we're still here. We're still alive. Yeah. You know, we have the choice to decide how we want to feel. We have the choice to choose love energy. You know, we have the choice to always know who we are, you know, and, and, and allow ourselves to love the parts that we don't like, you know, and, and then going back to your retreat, you know, that's what you're going to be love the parts you don't, you don't like. like and figure out what those parts are and why don't I love that part of me and give yourself the chance to you know, heal it, you know, so it comes to and wholeness. And forgive it. And what if it never changes? What if it never changes? I like to tell people that. What if it never changes? Yeah. You still have to accept it. Like, right. my dark side and my light side, uh, you know, my good side and my bad side, I have to like them both and just try to balance them so that one doesn't right. take, take control. I know, because, you know, we are in this planet of polarity. I mean, we have North Pole, South Pole. You know, it's like talking to the cycle of life. I was thinking about that too. It's like when the sun sets, you know, there were Indians who believed that, you know, the, the moon ate the sun, you know, so in a way that was like a death. So every night they had a death, you know, so then every morning was a rebirth, you know, so I thought, wow, what a great opportunity. I know to Victoria her. would love to talk about that because she does the flowers. So that's a huge witnessing of the cycle. And flowers have such. You know, a there's still life. flowers that die every day. Right. So, how did you meet Victoria? Man, it's so funny. It's such a roundabout thing. I was in a singles group for something in Orlando, and I met a girl named Rebecca. And then Rebecca, she was like number one fan. She was on my like, like, like. You know, <laughs> liking my mozo up and always joining my lives and then she had a group where we talk about uh politics and she she calls it positive vibes only I like but um uh, and, and, and then I just start to get to know Victoria and then I didn't realize like oh I'm surrounded by some really gifted people and um then I found out you know that she had that company it's it's in the bottle right and then she did you know, bought flower treatment and she taught me about bot flowers and yeah. Um I'll definitely I definitely want to ask you what exactly is bot flower treatment. I'm not too familiar with that one. I'll let her tell you it's yeah. amazing. Okay. It's amazing. It's you know it, see people do oils but bot flowers is not, not as much talked about. Right. And um one thing that Randy would have been able to talk about too is her tree tree meditations have you heard of that no uh -uh. what exactly is that god you can talk to the trees mama <laughs> right so rob, rob um taught me about this too before you cut the trees you know you can talk to the trees uh -huh. basically it's kind of like even how you pray for your food you pray for your food because you thank it for right. giving you nourishment because you had to take the life of the food so you can talk to your trees but you can actually like meditate with the trees and ask them to take away your depression or your pain anxiety wow you can meditate with it you know the the life 
surrounding the tree, you're in communion with it, mm-hmm. you know, when it, when you're in their presence. Wow. wow. And, so awesome. and they can talk to you. And imagine some of them been here for 300 years, or I know I have one in my yard. It has to be how old, Rob? 150? About 150 years old. Like, and then I start to spend more time with the trees, realizing. Oh my God, they've probably seen people born. They've seen people die. They've seen uh, every storm. Right. Like this, this entity has been alive this whole time. So I just became obsessed with trees kind of. <laughs> That's so awesome. That is so awesome. Um, well, and then their roots too underground, they have that whole connection. With, they, so like one tree, like say here in California could actually communicate with a tree in South Carolina, which is absolutely incredible. It was a doctor who hooked the tree up to a lie detector test. I don't know if you saw that. No, that sounds interesting. So he put two trees in the room and he had six people. Each one of them had a note. One person had a job to kill one of the trees. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Okay, yeah, go on. And then, and so the other tree, when that person walked into the room, the, the lie detector went off the chart and the tree started screaming when that person came in the room. Oh, wow. That's, so that's <laughs> it's amazing because they can communicate. So they're communicating okay. around us all the time. And they're probably thinking, oh my God, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. know. It's like, come on, Lord. It's like, wake these people up. I know, there's so many movies with, with living trees, like Lord of the Rings, the, the walking tree. Mm-hmm. And so I've been you know, we had a park here and I saw this one tree and I said, man, it looked like that tree is a dragon or this tree looks like a, um, a Gila monster or these trees look like, you know. Right, did you love seeing shapes in the in trees? Yeah. Yes. The faces and, you know, then, and then I saw that and Rango and I was like, wait a minute, there really are walking trees. And then I found those trees that I posted the other day that are literally walking trees. They can move, did it say 20 meters wow. a year? Something like that. It can move oh. 20 meters a year. Wow. So. That is so awesome. But There's just so much we don't know that that it kind of annoys me when people say it's not true. And it's like, well, unless you've been here for a thousand years, I really don't want to take your word for it. So right. <laughs> there was this one tree, it was like a mile wide. And some people um well, I, I saw that post where it was like it looked like it was cut off and then someone said it was a rock. But, you know, you know um, if you th- even go back to the Bible, the Nephilim, you know, there are these huge giants. So, yeah, you know, why not have these trees that are like 10 miles high? You know, right. you know so it, it makes sense. You know, they- and if, if where would the story of Gilgamesh come from? Where would the story of Zeus and mm-hmm. come from the Titans? Where would this story of Jack and the Beanstalk come mm-hmm. from? So I, my theory was that that tree was the giant's tree and that giant cut the tree down so Jack would stop coming up there to take stuff. I like that. Uh, it very well could be. Yeah. yeah, instead of cutting the tree down so the giant wouldn't come down. No, he cut the tree down so that you wouldn't go up there and steal his little golden eggs, right? So <laughs> Victoria yeah. told me a story the other day too. She said that the giant's in their veins, that's where gold comes from. Oh, that's interesting. Which that's would make sense. Sense. With Gilgamesh too, why would they tie him down? Like, right, to steal his, yeah. but that means they'd want, they would kill him to get his blood, which is, but wouldn't it be interesting if they did that and, you know, killed him to get his blood. And then the, you know, when you, it's like blue on the inside, but when it comes out, it's red. What if uh-huh. it comes out and it's like no longer gold. gold, you know? So they killed him for nothing. You know, it's like, you know, we go around from what I'm seeing or what I'm hearing, like even with unicorns, like they said, oh, they would round up the horn yeah. for the magic of the yeah. horn. So it seems like human beings like to destroy stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, but it's like, so if you think about, okay, I, I'm very familiar with Dolores Cannon and she calls this planet Earth School, you know, and, um, you know, souls come here to learn lessons. So, in order to learn lessons, you have to know polarity which means you have to know like all the dark stuff too, you know, right. and, so, and how do you truly know the light unless you know the dark? Right. Yeah. And so it goes back to the balance again. Yeah. So, 
and I, you know, I like to think that, you know, it's like it, you know, to have this balance within, you know, I'm not talking about crazy stuff where you're hurting people or killing people, you know, but you can live in harmony and, you know, re respect each other and have, have that balance, but right. it doesn't sound like humans though, does it? <laughs> well, there might not be the balance in the individual, but there's a balance in the collective because all is necessary. And so this is what I'm seeing too, like, you know, when it comes to Cardi B or the little Satan shoes things, and I, I start, you know, last year, everything was an alarm and it was eye opening, but this year it's more like, okay, well, all of this is necessary. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Shalom one day and she, and I was like, oh, I was talking about the homeless people. And she was like, yep, all of that's necessary so that it reminds you about your own existence. Yeah. It helps you all, you know, be aware of your own existence. It helps you examine yourself. So even the suffering of other people is necessary. Your own suffering makes you what better. Cause I tell people too, like, if you met me when I was in my twenties, you might be like, mm, I don't like Erica. <laughs> she cusses too much. She drinks too much and she's mean or she, you know, whatever, all the things that I was going through when I was younger, that all helped me become who I am now. So that right. I can help other people now. Right. So we still another cycle of life because we're going, you know, start off all innocent and you get all hard and, and then you go out into the world. Like I like to explain it like, um, like being the prodigal son, how he, he had it all and then was just put out into the middle of the world, tried everything, did it all and came back and was like, okay, I had enough of that now. Yeah. I think I know what I want, you know. I I know. And you have to, yeah, you have to be given the opportunity, opportunity to figure that out. No, you um, do. as right much now. as we want to hide and protect our kids right. or whatever. During this them. time, the development, we can protect them. But at some point, they're going to have to make a choice. Right. And hopefully they do. Yeah, hopefully. And they do. Yeah. And so it just shows you even more, all is necessary. You never appreciate how you feel today. Like today you feel good, right? You don't have a headache. Your back's not hurting. Right. But if you have that headache or you have that pain, then when you come back to normal where you're feeling just regular, you appreciate just feeling okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay right. starts to feel great because now you know pain. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of, that, that seems to be like a blanket statement for the entire country right now. Yeah. Dude, yeah, because we could, be, we could have been going to the beach the whole time. I've lived here for years and I probably went to the beach twice. Well, last year when I couldn't do other things right. and you're like, okay, well, let's start to do some stuff that we haven't been doing. You said you were working so much that so you were too tired to go out and you were too tired to do this. Too so now you have the opportunity. Go to the beach. You went to the beach like eight times last summer. Oh, awesome. Good. Places. I mean, I've been in Florida all this time. We just went to Casa Daga last week, this spiritual town. And mm -hmm. Just driving to a different town to go look at something. Mm -hmm. Something's been down the street this whole time that you never go see or appreciate because now you have this opportunity. Yeah, it's interesting. And it's you're learning, learning more things about yourself as you're learning more things out there, which is... Yeah. Uh, I learned that all those spankings for running into the woods and getting muddy. Because <laughs> I was looking for fairies the whole time. I was like, fairies and magic, and I'm going to go in their woods and find a unicorn. So I was like, the other day I said, oh my God, I've been looking for magic all my life. That's what I was, <laughs> that's what all those spankings were for. Because <laughs> I couldn't like with my shoes all muddy. <laughs> Well, and it seems like nowadays, if you know you let your kids go out there, they may not come, may not come back. You know, there's yes. this whole fear factor that goes with it too. Yeah, yeah. but how how wonderful to have that experience of you know just playing in the woods, you know, just um, and finding mm -hmm. fairies and mm -hmm. that wonderful you know energy of imagination and having fun. And I'm sorry, you got spanked. <laughs> your mom's yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I just. I, it was so fun. We went to the fairy gardens and I, I know, was I like a child, Rob? I was like a little kid. Yeah, good. I think we, yeah, more people need to let that little inner child come out and play. Yeah. Yeah. How different. Everything, I was like, oh my God, let me take a picture of everything. But I said, oh, let me not post it because I don't want to post everything. And then there'd be no reason for people to go. <laughs> I have to let them go for themselves so they can see it. Where where was it? 
the, it's, a, it's right out of Orange City, Florida. It's a place called Casadaga. Casadaga. I'm singing it, right? And it's not this well-known place, but I was looking up those ley lines and it's supposed to be a place where there's ley lines and vortexes. So the whole, most of the town, there's a, like a little downtown area dedicated to psychics and healers and wow. there's a crystal store. They got some beautiful houses. They got a little fairy garden. And then uh, a few little, they got a little Buddha garden too, where there's a little Buddha and a bench and it's cute. It's just this cute place. And a little feel good energy. Yeah. Okay. Were you guys there just for the day? It does, let me tell you, it doesn't take very long to see the whole thing. <laughs> it's, it's like two hours, you were like, okay, we got it. Two oh, hours. Awesome. Oh, good. What a great experience. Now, yeah. Actually, actually, I guess if we had stopped, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I guess if we had stopped, like maybe yeah. saw some healers or took a class, it would have took longer, but yeah. um, it, it's maybe like a maybe like a two block radius one block or two blocks three or four blocks you think i must be talking about new york blocks, new blocks, <laughs> new blocks. yeah he i guess he says two or three blocks yeah now, um the retreat is going to be in Asheville. that's the idea and you were saying that that's on ley lines right there's um there's a resort well there's a temple not far from there too Sri Samosvara Temple. Uh So they do Vedic knowledge there. There's a temple not far. Mm -hmm. Um, There's places all around. There's mountains and uh, places where you can go mining. You can go mining for gold, rubies, gemstones. So it's just surrounded by beautiful mountains and nice so zen and there's supposed to be a lot of energy there that they actually did compare it to mount Sh- sedona is sedona mount shasta is Sh- mount shasta yeah, sedona in-, in arizona yeah oh okay yeah. they compared it to sedona yeah i um in california right okay yeah this is um my friend lana you know, well, because we, I said we we're going live and I invite people to join in. So, um, yeah. So, um, you say hi. Um, so, hi, Lana. I can see you. I didn't have the screen opened up all the way. So, we're still waiting on Victoria. Lana, are your mics off? Um, oh, you got your plant life in there. I just um, got some plants in the house. I'm so a plant lady. <laughs> Bring some energy in the house. I, I talk to plants. Well, you're talking about people talking to trees. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, um, yeah I talk to plants. And um, George Washington Carver, oh, um, sexy make woman. Sure I'm decent. I know. Make sure I'm decent. And everybody's burning their bras again. So we. <laughs> Someone said, I go for comfort. Um, changes will be with the new earth. I said, they're going to get rid of underwear. <laughs> but, right constrictions just get rid of constrictions yeah. you know so um hmm okay uh, is that big? no it's not victoria oh, that looks like lana twice and lana Good you're morning. on there twice hi there hey. i'm on here yeah. twice yeah we see you twice uh, do, do, do. Let's look. Uh, um hmm why is this not working? Technical difficulties, but that's okay. I'd rather I, live in the truth than modeling right. a lie. Yeah, but I think what's happening right now is we're all being faced to face our truth. And um, more and more stuff that comes up like this, you know, with people getting sick or you know, facing hard choices, you know, you're being given an opportunity to figure out, okay, who are you? And you know, what you're doing is you're helping people do that. And I think that's really beautiful. And I, you know, so I love your videos and your postings and, and you know, just keep on doing what you're doing. Um, oh, let's try this again. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what, yeah. It's whatever runs through my mind. It's like, uh. <laughs> right? Cause you're, you're a conduit, right? Yeah. You know, being that conduit. Hey, Lana, 
Hi, yeah. like this, she is. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, I'm sure Victoria will be joining us any any minute now. Um, yes, I put it out there so people, if they wanted to ask questions or listen in, I'd never really done that before. I thought, okay, well, with the, everything you know being the way it is, you know, just giving op people the opportunity to say, okay, I want to chime in or I want to be a part of it. Um, but I'm definitely going to be posting this on YouTube. And, um, and like I said, it just takes one person. Like you affected me, you know, just by listening to your post. Thank you. That's so cool to know. And uh, you know, it just, it just sometimes you're, like, you're like, I only got 12 people watching me today. Like, <laughs> I don't even look at the numbers anymore. You know, I just, yeah. you know, I don't look. And, you know, I figured we just put it out there and have fun and, you know, just, you know, be in our truth, you know, and that's right. right? And that's what we have to do. You know, and if, if and I feel like too, people are waking up in waves. So next right. week, next month, next year, if somebody sees it and it helps, right? Yeah. So you just have a good conversation. So, go ahead. Oh, now go I was going to ask. So, are you doing film anymore? You are, because you have something in production right now. It's yeah, in post production. I, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I wear many hats. Um, I'm a mom. Um, I work in, I have a day job. I work in a law firm. Um, I'm an actor. I'm a writer, a screenwriter. I, I am working on my very first film, um, The Broken Path, which is a short. Um, I'm an artist. I, you know, and I, I think when you tune into that creative energy, you know, you, there's not just one thing. You know, it's like, I'm not one thing because as an artist, and when you like you tune into God energy, you know, it's like mm. you do whatever God directs you to do. And it's so, it feels kind of weird talking about God openly like that because people are like, oh, what do you do? You know what I mean? And it's not God in the church sense. It's like God is universal love, source. you know, is source. Yeah. It's, you know, the, the life energy in um, life is constant, you know, and it's constantly flowing. And, you know, when, that you are limited to what you can do, you find new ways of expressing that creativity, um, which is, so I, I'm getting to the point now where I feel much more comfortable talking about spirituality and you know, more of what's out there. And, um, and I, I like talking with people who are doing things to help you know, p other people learn about it. And um, it's not just, yeah, it's part of everything. Right. It is getting to the point where if it is offensive to you, then good because <laughs> you need to clear my space. Right. I'm really getting to the point where I'm okay with people being out of my space. Because if it bothers you, then maybe you don't need to be in my space. Right. Or maybe I'm meant to stir something up in you that either turns you left or right, you know? which I, I had someone literally tell me that that was my job, that my ancestors told me that I'm supposed to stir up the anger. So either you'll be, you know, right. feeling strong. Because right. I, I, I said, you know, in the Bible, they talk about being lukewarm and I quote a lot from the Bible and people get irritated by that too. Cause yeah, um, you can be spiritual and you have, you know, if you believe in Christ consciousness, then you believe in Christ teachings. Right. And he talks about being spit out because you're lukewarm. But I say people aren't even lukewarm. They're frozen. Because they <laughs> you go to church and there's no love in you. There's nothing but judgment. And I, just like I posted the other day, I was like, do people want there to be a hell? Because I got a conversation with a lady. I said, there is no hell. Even the Catholic Church just said there's no hell. And she was like, basically, she told me I was going to hell because I said, <laughs> hell. so I said, you know, I said, do people just want there to be a hell so you can tell people they're going there? Like, oh. is that what your whole thing is? You just want to judge people? <laughs> right. Find a way to feel superior. Yeah. Well, so many people are already living in hell. You know, they're, they, by choosing to be frozen and choosing to be stuck, that, that is their own hell. And not willing to learn not one new thing, right. not one other thing. So I do say stuff to, you know, that yeah. I know is going to be offensive. But if I feel 
in my heart and know that it's true, then I'm going to say it. And if it makes you, you know, judge me, then so be it. That's my job. Right. I tell a lot of people too, you wouldn't even like Christ if he was here. You wouldn't like him either. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he would not be your friend. You would not like that. Because, you know, it's, yeah. it's funny how things work. It's, it's interesting. What I think is interesting too is like everything that happens is like, it's meant to happen for us. You know, even, even this whole pandemic thing, you know, even making the choice of to take the vaccine or not to take the vaccine, you know, to get angry or to not get angry about it. I think it's all part of, you know, our own soul's evolution. You know, where are you going to take a stand? You know, how far do you have to be pushed before you finally say, this is me? You know, and I think a lot of people just get swept up and being told what to do, you know, because then they don't have to face themselves. And that's why I say people need to be root deep. That's it. That, that's why I say people need to be firmly rooted because if you don't know what you believe in, why? Right. Like I have medical information in my head. I have um, the Bible in my head. I have teachings in my head that I base my decisions on that. And if I can't be confident in what I have inside here and inside here, mm-hmm. that's a huge, that's a huge problem because now I'll just do whatever. I can't be mindless. I can't be you know, mindless and allow, you know, I hear misinformation. We hear misinformation all the time. Right? And you try to say something that's, you know, different, you get shut down. <laughs> you get banned from Facebook. <laughs> but what if you never have confidence confidence in yourself and someone told you it was okay to let your kid um, ride his bike in the middle of the road, but you already know that that's not right. But because you lack the confidence in your own decisions, you allow someone else to tell you what is right. Mm -hmm. And now you endanger yourself. And that's, that's basically the bottom line. We have to know, (laughs) you have to know, you have to be firm in your beliefs. And I think too, some people are lucky and they have great parents and they're like, oh, my parents are great. And uh, they can follow and listen to what their parents say, but they never grow outside of that. And they're like, well, mom, what should I do? Dad, what should I do? And they're completely reliant on the people around them. Right. And uh, it's nice if you have good people around you, but even those good people can be misinformed and still lead you down the wrong way. So by the time I got 30, I mean, I was, I was this person who was like, my mom said this and my mom said that. And I was really like, my mom was the Bible, you know what I mean? In a lot of cases, but then I was still not happy on, you know, with the decisions I was making. And I said, you know what, if I mess it up, it's mine. So let me mess it up based on my own decisions. Right. Now I can't blame anybody. Because a lot of people are blaming everybody like, well, if it's your fault that my car broke down and it was your fault that we broke up and it was your fault that I didn't get this house or it was your fault that I lost my house. And it's all based on you was listening to other people and never firm in your own. That's one big thing about the sacral chakra because that's I am. Mm -hmm. I have to know in my gut. I have to trust my gut. That is the second brain and it was given to you for a reason. How can people start learning that though? Because it seems like everything like in social media and advertising goes against, you know, it wants you to be somebody else. You know, it's like, get the butt implant, get the lip implant, you know, you know do this, do that. How, how, do, how do we start teaching our children or even ourselves how to trust that I am? You know, how, how do we start trusting that, you know, that inner instinct that God gave us? First thing to do would be to examine and so, you know, I, I was working with Hannah Hanley and um, one, one, one thing that we did was separating the voices. Cause are you hungry or did a commercial come on? I noticed we were doing this the other day. We were watching a show. All of a sudden I wanted honey buns and I wanted chicken and I want, and I started to realize like, wait a minute, these are all things that they put inside the television show. And all of a sudden I'm hungry. And so we have to start examining why do I want this? Why do I need this? What will happen if I don't get it? 
Right. And then, of course, there's also meditation and understanding, you know, I am talking to your gut, listening to your gut, just taking the time to, to, to turn off these other voices, turn off these TVs and radios. And that's another thing, like, Rob loves music, and I love music, too. But I also know that music is still telling me things like all these love songs is like, I can't live without you. <laughs> and you're like listening to, oh, I can't. No, you can breathe without people. Okay. <laughs> you can. Stop, you know. So I'm like very, I'm a firm believer that, you know, watching what you take in and, mm -hmm. and examining yourself, spend time with yourself just try to understand your thoughts and then you know we do childhood he healing going back and healing that inner child and you start to think about the situations because from the beginning that first seven years you're being programmed based on your environment right yeah well and for me great example everything was what well, my mama said this and my mama said that i remembered everything my mama said everything my grandma said my sister was like I don't remember her saying that. I was like, girl, weren't you listening? You know, like grandma said, you know, and uh, that that's very strong programming. Right. You know, it's very strong. And it's not that it's bad. It's not all bad, but you have to understand what's yours and what's real and what's, you know, what, what, what do you want to keep and what, what can you afford to let go? And then understanding what serves you. So I know I ask my spirit guides to tell me, you know, to remove things that don't serve me. So something might trigger me today. And I'm like, oh, why did I have this bad feeling? Or, you know, and then somehow a childhood memory might pop up or a youthful memory pop up where I'm like, oh, this is where I got that belief from. Does it serve me anymore? And allow myself the ability to let it go. But if it no longer serves me. You're giving yourself the time to do that though. Some people, so many people feel you know, embarrassed or they think, oh, why should I do that? Or they don't even think about taking that time for themselves. You know, they just get so swept up in you know, the programming you know, of you know, what society wants to feed them. You know, so how, how can it be? How can people know that it's okay to take time for yourself, you know, to go on that nature hike, to take 10 minutes to meditate or pray, you know? That is a huge problem. That's a huge problem because there's so much guilt. We're just so guilty, especially as women, because we're so always taking care of someone else. Right. And so... We have to understand too, once we become depleted, we're no good for anybody else or for ourselves. You know, what can you pour into somebody else if your cup is empty? Right. It's funny because I was in the financial services business too. And this is something I used to tell people because uh, people say, you know, like, well, they're here to put God's kingdom on earth. But if you're broke, how are you, how can you help build God's kingdom if you're broke? And so that's financially, morally, mm -hmm. uh, spiritually, emotionally. If your cup is empty, what can you give to anyone else? So you have to give to yourself, your emotional bank account, and your real bank account. You know what I'm saying? So you got an emotional bank account and a, a spiritual bank account. And so you have to, it's okay to say no and and not you know, always devote all your time to other people. You know, right now I have a good friend that's in the hospital and being susceptible to diseases is a part of what? Lack of sleep, lack of proper diet, not drinking enough water, worrying. Worrying lowers your vibration. It, it opens you up, you know, the same way that food and water and rest does. So you have to get a staple on that. Uh, if your body is sleepy, you know, I'm real, I used to be really big on the energy drinks too. If your body is sleepy, you, it's because you need sleep. You know what I mean? So it's not something that you can ignore. You cannot ignore. 
I was never big on pain medicine too. Like me being a person that was in the military and in pain, the idea of getting those cortisone injections in my knees, I thought, well, well now if I twist my knee or if I do something that, you know, I have no warning now because I've suppressed the pain, right? That pain is a warning. These things are warning. Your body is giving you signals. So if you always putting Pepto-Bismol in there and ignoring the real a problem, if you're taking pills and ignoring the pain, you know, we're just we're just programmed to just keep on going when we don't need to do that. We need to pay attention to those aches and pains and the, the little quivers in the stomach and the unsure mm-hmm. feeling because this is our body talking to us, you know. Yeah. So it, it goes back to you know knowing yourself, you know allowing yourself to to know yourself. You know, I'm going to check in with um Victoria. It, it's I I don't know if she, huh? Uh, interesting. Um, because nine twenty. Did she email you by chance or has she? Uh, interesting. Not that I don't enjoy, I don't, not that I don't enjoy talking with you. Uh, uh, hmm. Okay, so we're taking this little break in between as we're trying to get Victoria on the phone. This is um, So Zoom In. I, I am Sophia Louisa Lee, and I am speaking with the First Lady Erica Simmons as she's reaching out to her partner for a retreat they are planning in May, um, the cycle of life. So Victoria, hopefully will be with us in a few minutes. She is all about flower power, using the essence of flowers to heal, to, um, to really raise your fre- frequency. So I'm really hoping we can get her on. You know, but it's like, we just go with the flow. You know, whatever life happens, we just keep going. Isn't that right, Erica? Erica, you are muted, so I can't hear you at all. But it's like, oh, you, know, you know, we just go with it. And, you know, no matter what comes up, you know, we just stay in that flow. And I noticed that more and more and more, if you don't get it, maybe you weren't supposed to have it. <laughs> right? So everything happens for a reason. And, yeah. and um, we learn from it or they'll keep happening until we do learn from it. Then we'll learn something else. <laughs> But what I liked about reading um, Victoria's website was, you know, she really connects to flowers. And, and like we were saying earlier, you know, flowers have such a short lifespan, sometimes even just within a day. And you know, they're, they're so magical. And I realized that when pe- you know, people get sick, what do you do? You send them flowers, you know, and it's like they have this innate healing energy, you know, just by being a flower or, you know, you stop and smell the roses and that's, you know, kind of coming back to being grounded and um, feeling good. So it's um, and then, I mean, they have so many significant meanings. And so I think it's fantastic that she's, you know, into that and she has studied it and really knows her flowers. I mean, even for self-confidence, right? I can yeah. imagine like a flower for self-confidence. I'm like, give me some of those flowers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just beauty. It's, it's beauty, which is... If you can see beauty in everything, how different life would be, you know, um, in all things. You know, because every every soul is beautiful. We are all a soul. You know, we we're just wearing these different avatars for this period of time. You know, but we're all you know the same that way. You know, we we literally are all one. Right, and if you believe, believe what I believe, you've been here a few times. You get to come back as different. You know, you get to try out different suits. <laughs> right, and, and that's something else you're gonna be talking about at your retreat. You know, a little past life regression, right? Yeah, I think. Um, I don't know. Have you seen the movie Wreck It Ralph? Yes, I, ha- I have a daughter. <laughs> well, we know we, we talked about polarity. Mm-hmm. And here's Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph, there's polarity in Wreck-It Ralph because on Wreck-It Ralph, he's the bad guy. But when the game is off, which I consider being back in the between worlds or in the astral, Mm. we're going back to source and hanging out like, okay, what are we going to do next time? (laughs) 
that that is that so truly just bad or good mm-hmm. or this is the role that they play during this lifetime like being homeless or being abused or whatever it is that's happening in this lifetime it serves the collective so that we can witness mm-hmm. we have to witness different things and so we we make contracts mm-hmm. so even with my son i've been here with my son before several times full group right Mm-hmm. And so when I wrote with the beauty in my mess and I wrote about, I said, my son was the first man I ever loved. It's strange that I wrote that, not really knowing that I've loved him in the past. So when I'm talking about this lifetime, I'm like, he was the first man I ever loved. Like, yeah, I did love him before. Mm-hmm. He's been my uncle. I've been his mom. I've been his father and I've been married to him in another lifetime so I was like oh my god (laughs) like I did a past life regression where um where I was a man I was a white male and I had a wife and my wife died and I witnessed the pain of my wife dying I mean you would think "Mm, this is can't be real this is just my imagination but I moved forward and the pain that I felt was more pain than I felt in this lifetime that I was literally sobbing mm. on her death. And that just can't be made up. Right. And I said, oh my God, how can, how can you live with this kind of pain? That's how I felt. And I, I just couldn't imagine living with that much pain. And it just was not a good end for me. I had drank myself into a stupor and, um, basically went basically insane. And one thing that stood out to me, well, besides this, that that's how I guess I, from that pain I felt, I knew that this was true. But one thing that I noticed that in the house that I have now, in the house that I had in the past, that I set my house up the same way, the front door, the window and my desk. And I was like, even in my past life, there was the front door, the window and my desk. I had an office with my father. It was the front door, the window and the desk. And I was like, boy, I'm consistent. (laughs) Kind of wonder like throughout your lifetime, who are you? Are you this? You're you're not necessarily this. But there's a residue that goes through your lifetime that what you really are carries through from lifetime to lifetime. And I thought it was amazing. And I still was a workaholic because even though like here I am medically retired, I stay busy, I'm never bored. I'm always giving myself an assignment. So I was a workaholic then, I'm kind of a workaholic now. So that personality is there. This is always different, but that personality is there. Um, is will you be showing people how to have their own past life regression or is that something that you'll be doing at the retreat or just talking about it we will discuss um, so one of the first things we're going to do is the getting to know you and then we're going to do some sitting in silence so that individuals can connect Mm -hmm. and try to understand like you're saying being vulnerable with another person understanding their humanity so they can understand this existence, we are not separate. Mm -hmm. One person's pain affects everyone's pain. That joy that you give affects everyone. Mm -hmm. So that's the first night. The next day was is vision. So I do vision boards and I'm I work with spirit with these vision boards because a lot of people do some cookie cutter vision boards where it's just I want and I like, well, I like to ask why. Why, who do, who will it affect? What, what will happen if you don't get it? What will happen? And then why do you feel this, these things will make you happy? To try to get you deeper, but also too, to connect you with the vision and why vision is so important. Because if, if you don't visualize your life, that's the first line of creation is in the, in the mind, and then it becomes material. So walking people through that, then um, 
Now the death doula that's going to discuss the cycle of life because to start your new life, you have to die to some old things. You have to let some things go and do, you know, do a release. And then later on that evening, we'll do a release. And then here comes Victoria with her flowers, renewal with the flowers. Okay. You have to tell me about the Bach flower th therapy. I mean, yeah. wow. I, that sounds so fast. I mean, I know I was hoping that she, you know, she would tell um, but you know, whatever came up, it, you know, it's fine. Um, but if you could just kind of give us a little idea of what it's about, please. Wow. <laughs> she, flowers have, um, individual flowers have lots of power. They have what you need. And so what she does is you soak them and you get the essence of the flower and you make a tincture and you wouldn't believe it. So things like confidence, I mean, you can go by Zodiac. Mm -hmm. You can go by male, female. There's so many formulas you can put together. Um, I, I, I can, that, that is hers. Okay. <laughs> really Victoria, hers. wherever you are, we know, we'll just, we'll just have to get her back. Just have to we'll have to come back for her sometime. But, yeah. but, but the amazing thing is the power, um, the power of those flowers, that essence of that flower can can help you get a jump start to renew your life. So she's gonna help you. She's giving away a formula. So during the class, you actually receive a formula of renewal. So you can start your new life with confidence, um, positivity and joy. So she has a special mix that she's putting together that you get and she's gonna explain it. But then also she's gonna take you back to the womb. So. We're not really going to, there's only but so much healing you could do with 20 people in, in three days. So it wouldn't be, and then to that, that's something you'd have to plan on, you know, individual services, because mm -hmm. like me, I was crying for a couple of days when I did my past life reading, because that was so traumatic experiencing the death of my wife that I was just, mm -hmm. even just telling my sister about it, I was just like, sobbing right you're releasing you're releasing energy that had to be let go and i think that's probably why you had to have that experience yeah i would not want to try to do that with 20 people it would <laughs> just be too much like you don't know what door you're going to open so mm -hmm. that would be definitely something we would discuss but not actually try to do it would be too much do you, you think know? That, do you think that there's a way to have that kind of experience but to know that you now, you as Erica now can be detached from experiencing the trauma of whatever the experience was or the joy of it. So whatever that high emotion was, whether, you know, traumatic or, you know, incredibly pleasurable that you can witness it like you're watching a movie. Do you think something like that is possible? Or do you think by seeing it and feeling it, you're reliving it? Hmm. I guess I only know the way that it was done for me. I'm not really sure you can observe it because I know you can go back to your inner child and you can observe your inner child from above. And not every time that I've done that, where I look back at myself as the child that, that I was emotional, I was not, you know, I felt the relief of hugging the inner child and giving her a kiss and telling her, you are a good person, you are okay, you know. It really just depends on what it is you reveal at that time, what it is you see. And that's the thing. We don't know what you're going to see. Right. Which is, we don't know how traumatic it is. Maybe you died peacefully in your sleep and maybe you had a wonderful life, but maybe you were murdered or maybe you had an accident or some sort. So it just, it would be hard to say because everyone's so unique and, you know, their past lives are so different. Right. Right. Are you familiar with quantum healing hypnosis technique, QHHT? Yes. You know, so I know Dolores Cannon, the whole, you know, she would take you through past life regressions to help heal the current situation. You know, so it, I, I, I just think it's so fascinating energy, you know, because energy never dies. You know, it's constantly moving. So even when our physical self dies, you know, that energy goes somewhere else, you know, transmutes into something else. So whatever, you know, like we were talking about earlier, you know, your soul just holds on to that energy, you know, and I, I think maybe it's looking for a way to transmute into something else or 
There's so, so many I had an amazing um, Ria Slay and Sharia and Shalom and I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago, and that was the amazing epiphany that hit me. Is because because time is not linear, like we say. Your 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 eight year old self is not dead. That timeline is still exists right now. Mm-hmm. So these timelines all exist right now. There is where there's the reason why the possibility exists to go heal it because it's still happening right now. Uh-huh. And so now with quantum healing, I can move over here on this railroad track. I like, I like those pictures of the sacred geometry, how the lines touch. And I told my sister, cause there's things my sister says, I remember when we did this and I remember, and I was like, I'm not sure that was me that you're talking to because this might be, this is my own thing too. This is me number 36 and you're talking to me number nine. And me number nine has jumped. When, it, when those lines hit, we changed places and we're all over the place. So the memory you have, me number nine is over here on another timeline. So I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and I was like, well, maybe, maybe it's because that's not the same me right now. Right. Since we're moving through these timelines, but definitely the the that eight year old me exists, and that me from the other lifetime exists because it's that that's the whole <laughs> it's the whole wonderful thing about being able to do quantum healing is. Well, it's it's so, it's so great that you mentioned timelines because even what's going on right now, you know, with the government, with you know, world economics, with you know, the vaccine, it's like, we still have the opportunity to choose a timeline. You know, what timeline are you choosing? And it goes back again to know thyself, you know, who are you? You know, what are you capable, you know, based on your choices? I truly believe, you know, there are opportunities where you don't have to get sucked into that timeline that's gonna, you know, um, turn you into a zombie. Um, I truly believe there are timelines that you can truly be the free person you are meant to be. What do you think about that? That's what I'm choosing. And I call it, I'm, I'm just saying choosing my own reality because, you know, what happens on, you know, the Grammys does not affect my universe. My son doesn't know who Cardi B is. He might know her from a meme, but he's never heard her songs. And so they, those people don't exist in my universe right now. <laughs> they don't. So she can't make me angry, you know, or these new shoes, whatever. I saw it and I was like, hmm, check in, check back out. That, that doesn't affect my home. I, I was telling, I tell people too, like there's a family in North Carolina right now, just imaginary family that lives out in the Appalachian. They don't own a TV. They're not affected by the Grammys, by the vaccines, by who's the president, because none of that matters in their world. It's what matters to you in your world. You choose that. You choose it every day, just like you can choose to be angry and you can choose to hold on to the past or you could choose to, you know, and the wonderful thing, having brothers and sisters I can see it in our existence as well, because there's things that I have a sister, she remembers when I was eight years old, when I, I was like, I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, and then I have another sister who I remember certain things and she remembers none of it at all. And her perception of what happened is completely different. Her perception of my reality is different. Mm-hmm. And so it just shows you You can choose what you want to hold on to and what you want to let go. It's getting to the point where now as we watch TV or we might reference something, a star or something, like there's people we can't even remember their names. Like I had to look it up, like short comedian. Oh, Kevin Hart. Could not remember his name. Could not remember his name. And I'm starting to remember less and less of other things except for the things that are important to me. But you know what those things are. You know, you know what's important to you. I'm firm in those things. The rest of that stuff, like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, I think it'd be great if more people knew that they, they are allowed to know what's important to them, you know, and what's within them. You know, and it's not, you know, it's not getting butt implants, you know what I mean? 
Right. <laughs> it seems to be a big thing nowadays. <laughs> What's happening is, I think people don't understand the definition of consent, the universal law of consent. You don't have the consent to digesting things. Right. Okay, universal yeah. laws. I, I like that you bring that up because so many people aren't aware of these universal laws. Is that right. something that you'll cover too in your in your retreat maybe? or Some of them we will cover because they pertain to the certain classes, but you know, like me, the law of reciprocity. I started the Mozone to give to people because if you give to others, ultimately you're giving to yourself. You reach your own goal. And you're living by the same law because you introduced me to being on your show, not so that you could gain anything, but then in return, I'm going to give to you as well. You know what I mean? So um, there's a universal law of consent, the law of compensation. You might not get paid for your show, but eventually the work that you do, the universe is gonna find a way to pay you back. And so those things, I'm deeply rooted in that. And those are things that I would discuss in my vision board class, yeah. Well, I, I think it's so important to be able to have a dialogue, you know, for people just really, you know, when we have these, you know, I want to, well, going back to thoughts, everything is a thought, but when, you know, when we can see beyond so much more than what's being offered, you know, when we can see beyond what is, you know, and it's funny that um, film short I'm working on right now, it's currently being edited. That's the whole thing. You know, see beyond what appears to be, you know, what, what's really going on you know, and not necessarily on, a, on the outside, but, you know, taking it within you know, who, who am I? What, and why, why am I doing this? Why am I choosing that? You know, and I, when I saw your video, that first one, I was so inspired by it, you know, and I, I knew I wanted to meet you and talk with you just because you had such truth. And, you know, I live in Los Angeles and it's, you know, saying that people live their truths would be really hard. <laughs> you know, um, everyone seems so caught up in other things, you know, and I, I think it's more important now than ever for people to really come and say, this is who I am. And so to have any kind of dialogue about that, and I think, you know, your retreat is a great opportunity for people to discover their truth, you know, just by learning about these different modalities that can help heal them. Because like you said, every time you heal yourself, you're healing the planet. I believe that. Um, and it's just so important. So it's funny because people want to change the world. Like they want to look at this and change it and look at this and change it and point fingers and change it. When the number one thing that you could do is start right in here. Exactly. You know, Eckhart Tolle, he <laughs> speaks about that. I mean, everybody that knows, they, they know that it has to start with you. Exactly. And even too, helping people like, like maybe I did help somebody with a flat tire, but I'm not sitting there like this, like, okay. I'm expecting you to pay me. Uh, it takes me back to that scripture. Like it's even in the Bible, do every job as if you're working for the Lord. So if I'm at my job, I'm not looking for them to pat me on my back. God will compensate me. The source will compensate me. So I'm not expecting compensation from each man and each woman, but source will compensate me. And then that, that's that been like a huge thing in my life. Like I'm firmly believing in that, that the universe compensates me. And that's not always in money because people think abundance in money. And, you know, so it, much more that's that. part of it. But, you know, you know, last year my sister said, she said, I was kind of worried about you because you were like talking about you want to be a millionaire. And some strange things happened. Some strange people started coming into my life. And it was a lot of quid pro quo of, well, what do you want? And it was, you know, there was some innuendo behind it. And my sister thought, well, she said, well, I thought that's what you wanted. And I was like, no, I'm not willing to give up my soul for monetary compensation. That's not what my life is about. And then I started to wonder too, so whether you have a million dollars or whether you have the money you have today, do you have everything that you need right now? You know? Can you still have a wonderful life and not have 
a million dollars or $10 million? Like, could you still have a, a wonderful existence? You you could, because it's it's what you put into your life on a daily basis that's no, are you happy? And joy. You know, are you happy? Joy, joy is everything. Yeah, live your joy. What is that to you? You know, and that would be that. living your purpose, and and you know, you know, getting over the guilt. <laughs> Let's and go. I feel go. guilty about everything. That that is a joy, and that's a big thing that I like to help people with. Because I had a friend approach me yesterday, and she said, oh, "I didn't do anything for myself yesterday. I just went to bed." I said, "Well, you went to sleep. That was good. <laughs> you didn't stay up all night." And so even a nap. That's why I put even a nap is self care. So whatever it was that your body called for, don't don't feel guilty. Because I used to feel guilty about taking a nap. Right. And, you know, because I was raised on that punishment system too, like, well, I was going to give you this, but I'm not going to give you that because you did this, that because that was done to me as a child, I do that to myself as an adult. Yeah. I can't reward myself like, oh, well, you can't have this because you didn't do that. And I do that to myself. I'm like, you're not under punishment anymore. Your mom's not here. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't have to do this anymore. Good thing you caught it. Hey. Stop it. You know, it's like, you're aware of it. You know, Dude, even at a vision board class, I had a man ask me, he was like, so how long should I look at my board? Should it be 10 minutes a day? I said, stop making rules for yourself to, to mess it up. <laughs> it's like, like we give ourselves things to fail at. It's so funny. It's like, yeah, I agree. With, I agree with you completely. All right. Yeah, just take a look in it. Okay, I saw it. Boom. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're good. No, it's not. I think that, you know, how people used to spank themselves on the back with the little, you know, they do it. Well, like, yeah. Yeah. We're just always punishing ourselves. Always punishing ourselves. So we got to stop it. Just I stop it. Like, you know, I say, you think God, you, you have a child. Would you, would you tell your child to go lash themselves a hundred times on the back? Would you tell your child that? No, you love your kid. You wouldn't do that. You'd be like, oh, give me a hug. Oh, hey, don't do it again. Move. Move on. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Lana, can, can you hear us? Lana? Yes, I can hear. Yes, I can hear you guys, and I'm enjoying the conversation. Do you want to ask anything? Um, I, well, I was gonna a couple of the questions that I was gonna ask Erica about the retreat. Is that your name, Erica? Yes, yes. Erica, Lady Erica, oh, yes. the, uh, first the first lady. <laughs> The but first you me, Erica, I'm not like a bully like that. I know you go to the doctor's <laughs> office and there's like the nurse will say doctor. And I'm like, well, he's my patient. So I'm not calling him that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like a bully like that. So yeah. But a couple of questions that I had about the retreat, you already asked Sophia. So that's good. Um, but Erica, so you have a, a website or a practice. You do uh, past life regressions. Is that what I'm understanding? I don't do it. I had my own done ah. by Matthew John. Matthew John did mine. And okay. um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not in that realm yet. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm still a student at this point. Like gotcha. I've studied tarot, so I'm pretty good with my tarot. But then uh, other than that, I'm really into vision boards and okay. coaching i i help people and this is what i was going to say a lot of people don't have friends with open minds or maybe their friends friends that don't give good advice right. <laughs> like we're surrounded by people who you know they're just doing it the best way they can and i mm -hmm. noticed that i had a life coach that it was like, wow, I got a life coach. And basically that's like my best friend who I go to for advice, right? So I decide, you know, and that's something I've been doing for people and incorporating business advice in there. Like, oh, well, where should you go to get your website? How do you get your logos? Um, how do you create? So I help people create their life. Like what is the life that you want to have? Nice. So coaching through the vision board on what, you know, building the life that you want for yourself. What you deserve okay. to have. Yeah. That you deserve to have. So it's a spiritual uh, life coaching, basically. Right. Spiritually based. Spiritually based, yes. Nice. I love and, it. Yeah. Boy, so I've, been I've really been enjoying the conversation. It's a lot of uh, 
topics that have been coming up in my life lately. So to hear you, you two talk about different things, I'm like, ah, spirit confirmation. Yeah, that's exactly. So I'm enjoying. And so anything deeper that I don't do, that's why I have um, women of the stars. I got people, you know, I got, it's like I have my own basketball team. I got, <laughs> yeah, the, so, the, um, that's why we have to reach out, you know, because, you know, what you know can help someone else and what they know can help you. And it's, it's all this, you know, power grid. Mm-hmm. So do you I have like a website? Oh, power sorry. grid, the first lady, Erica.com. And then I have my link tree, which I have to look at that. I, I don't know why. Okay, so it's the link tree and then forward slash the first lady Erica. So, and I'm, be- I'm a believer in this. Like sometimes people can get a little bit greedy and a little bit scattered, but do 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 one thing well. You know, a lot of us, we're multi-talented, but do at least one thing well. So I, I, I'm staying with what I know. And when I'm comfortable, I'll move on. But other than that, like, uh, I, I know I have a network of spiritual healers that do, they all have different talents and some of them do salt baths and some of them do readings and some of them do past life regressions and all kinds of, he- they, I mean, the, the methods of healing are so vast. Mm-hmm, and so then I just, you know, believe in sharing that information with other people. Um, they say, know what you know, know what you don't know and know who knows what you don't know, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> so, and that's, I, that's exactly it, though. I consider myself a conduit. I don't have to do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. Cool. Well, that's thank so very you. awesome. Well, Erica, thank you so very much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. You know, we've, we've talked uh, almost 90 minutes and just feels like it went by so fast. You I know? love it. Yeah. You should see what the after party looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever we go live you think you see us live and it'll be like sometimes two hours sometimes three hours like but then afterwards we're like okay the camera's off now what do you want to talk about like oh my god so you know we, how, yeah how far deep the rabbit hole shall we go wow <laughs> it, it, it's fun but you know that's because it's funny because we're uniting people that physically we're not near each other but right. But we're like the best friends that we have because we're connecting solely based on, you know, what we truly believe and what we resonate with. And it's amazing because people think, oh, the internet is the devil and uh, Facebook is garbage. And it's like, no, but you know, every every bad thing or everything can be used for a bad, can be used for good as well. So and there's that plur, yeah. yeah. No, and, and you're in South Carolina right now, right? Well, no, I'm in I'm in Florida. I had to think. Oh, you're, oh, you're in Florida. My, my hey. I'm from South Carolina, and my family's up there, so I'm up there pretty often. I like to go to the Healing Springs up there, mm. get that water from the Healing Springs. But are you in Asheville or um, South Carolina? Okay. Okay. Asheville is in North Carolina. It's about three hours from my mom's house. Okay. All right. So, you're, and that's so you're. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. God. Your retreat is going to be in North Carolina, it looks like, Crabtree? It's, it's such a weird place. It's called Clyde. Like, the little towns are, okay. it's kind of, you know, I guess it's like L.A., right beside L.A., there's this, 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 you know, the little towns around L.A., so it's kind of like, it's right outside of Asheville. It's a town called Clyde. Crabtree is there, and Crabtree, that's where that temple is, the Shree Temple. Oh, that'd be pretty awesome to go to. But, I picked it because of the ley line. So I know the energy is going to be good. Now, would people be able to spend the night there or lodging offsite or? No, we're, it's one big cabin. It's amazing. It's three stories, one big cabin. There's a fire pit outside. There's a trail. Um, there's, um, there's some individual rooms and then there's some, some group rooms and then there's like a downstairs basement with rooms. I mean, it, it's, it's beautiful. I think the, um, I'm looking at your eventbrite.com page. The pictures that you see, that's the actual cabin. Wow. That's beautiful. And it is stunning. And it's like surrounded by greenery surrounded right. by nature. And right. I don't even think we weren't even planning. Some of us weren't even planning on sleeping in the house. We were sleeping outside. Like, let's do it. Wow. I like camping. I'll sit by a fire and sleep now. So Me but too. I'm an army girl, so I'm slept in the gravel. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. 
Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so very much, Erica. You're awesome. And I feel so honored to have you on. I am um, so honored. That was so you. cool. I just saw this beautiful woman friending me one day and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Who is she? She's amazing. Who is she? No, but like I said, you're awesome. I mean, you have such great energy and you just put it out there and um and you never know. You never know who it, who it's gonna affect. And you know, you affected me and I'm I'm glad that we connected and I'm gonna see you again. You know, it's like I yeah, I, I think we're part of the same soul yes, group. This is the though. beginning. This is yeah. just the beginning. So I don't want people to be sad about vaccines or whatever is going on create your own reality and make it true. This is just the beginning. And yeah. somebody, and it seems like, oh, COVID should be this horrible thing. Well, look at the beautiful things that are happening because of COVID, you know what I mean? It's exactly. forcing us into a new space and that's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Live your joy, baby, yep. Yes, YOLO. <laughs> So, oh, which they say, but it's not true, is it? <laughs> you do not live only once. You live a couple of times. Of like a few thousand times. <laughs> a few thousand times, yeah. And we, and that's just talking about here. <laughs> that's just talking about here. That's yeah. a whole other conversation, though, isn't it? That's a whole nother. But one that could be fun to talk about. I was like, hmm. All right, next time. Yeah, I could tell so, you about my star seed journey. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Okay. All right. You said it. Let's go. Let's go there. So, okay. Um, I've, I've been learning a lot about that star seed stuff, you know, and it, um, I'm learning so much about Palladians and Arcturians and just like all these other, and I'm like, wow, it's just, so we are not alone. We are not it's, alone. it's so much more for me to learn, but, um, I did my star seed journey mm -hmm. and I went back to Lyra. Very powerful. Wow. Very and you know, fun. when you think of this, you think, oh, it's going to be advanced technology and it's going to be, and, it, and it's way more natural than you think. It's not, it's not like big computer board systems. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like that. I got to fly on a dragon. Well, the amazing thing for me was that um, ever since I was little, I just remember one day I was about two or three and I got up and I was looking for a mark that was on my foot. And I was like, my mark is missing and I can't fly. And oh, wow. I was really disturbed that I could not fly. And I had a recurring dream for years and years about me flying mm -hmm. above flowers in these beautiful fields. And I was like, I'm not supposed to be here. And I don't know why I'm here with these people, but I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> I was just like, why, why am I here? And I am the oddest ball in my family, just odd. And I am the isolated, the odd one. And I was the one that was always trekking off into the woods, looking for berries and mm -hmm. looking for a dragon and stuff like that. And uh, and then to finally, you know, do a star seed journey. And is that is that something you did with someone who like guided yes. you? Yes. Also, I did that with Matthew John and. He made me go look into the mirror. So I got to describe the furniture. And then I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh my gosh, I got these ears like this. And I got some eyes and my eyes are like this. And my hair is like big and white and just crazy straight. And then uh, I got to, um, I was amazed. And then, because I'm telling you the whole time you're thinking like, this isn't what I see. But you have to be firm and start to understand like, okay, this is yeah. your, your really hypnosis and your, this is what you see, trust what you see, go. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got to fly down the steepest hill with a dragon and I'm just like, Woo! and I felt the exhilaration in my body. It was just amazing. And um, wow. that it was is just beautiful. I was like, oh God, I would like to do that again. Yeah. So, I People can do that for themselves. And I have not got to the point where I can do that for myself yet. Well, practice. But I think yeah. the way things are shifting, you know, energetically for our whole planet, I think more and more of these memories are going to start coming back to, to all of us. You know, it, it's yeah. just part of this whole shift, you know, no matter what kind of level you're on. Is, so I, I think, you know, we all are going to start remembering more. And Lyrans are so, so powerful. You know, and just um oh there's so much I could talk about <laughs> I feel like I just have I feel like there's just lessons that I have to learn and, and right. then when I'm to that point then they'll let me through this threshold of okay 
I think it's going to come in like a flood. You're just like, okay, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. I mean, I've gotten people say, oh, I can see a purple aura around you. And, and I've seen it a couple of times. And it's just more me developing my own, um, okay. spending more time in my own meditation and spending my own time. I mean, I've got lots of ideas flowing through me. And, and I think it's, you know, like, don't get distracted with this. Do what we're asking you to do right now. Okay, and then we can go back to this. So right. I, def I, I have to finish what's on my table first, I guess. Oh, well, it's, it's all happening. It's, it's coming. Happening. It's definitely coming. You no, know, and you know, you're taking you're taking initiative and you know, you're creating stuff like the retreat and you're bringing people together. And that's so, so important too. Yeah. You know, and it might be my time to sit back and watch people use their talents, but my talent, I'm good at my talent, which is making the parties, organizing <laughs> events, and doing those vision boards. So I'm working on the parts that I know that I'm good at. And then, you know, yeah, in the state of allowance, trust, yeah. trusting that I'm on the right path, right where I'm supposed to be, right at this moment. Well, I am grateful for that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thanks, Lana, for joining us. And thank I know you. I'm being a supportive friend, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. Oh, so awesome. You know, it's like, yeah, Lana is awesome. Um, Proud of you, Sophie. Uh -huh. well, I, you, I know. Well, I think I think you you both are awesome. I think you I think you guys would actually get along really well if you know, we meet because I think you both have a lot in common. Um, but that's another show. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Anyway, Sorry, do a, we could do a ladies' night. You know, a virtual ladies' night. I like that. Yeah, you know, let's yeah. do it. Wine, get you a little wine. Yeah, I know. Like, I think that's the wrong symbol for wine, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm supposed to open my hands. Wine like, is oh, good. Wine. <laughs> and then I'll 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 be awake by that time, and I should be. Uh, my hair will be done, so I'll share my picture. Hey. <laughs> Uh, All right. Well, have a beautiful weekend. Uh, Easter tomorrow, you know, um, Ostara, you know, rebirth, you know, so go out, you know, um, have a beautiful, beautiful Easter. I'll go hang out with some trees. Yes. Yeah. I love that. All right. Well, love thank you me. very much, Erica. And I look forward to talking to you soon. I'll, I will post this. I will put all your links in the um, description below on YouTube and definitely share it. And you know, if it just touches one person, you know, like you had touched me, it's, you're awesome. <laughs> awesome. Amen. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. All right. Thank Mwah. you. All right. Have a good one. Thanks again. Thank you. Love it.